Hey, so this is Joe, and this is the third part of the fifth chapter of Stuart's Calculus, and we're going to be talking about getting volume um, of an air of a curve uh, using non-circular cross-sections. So in the previous video, we dis discussed the revolution method of finding volume by revolving a curve around an axis. And that uses circular cross-sections to find that um, volume. However, in this lesson, we're going to be using non-circular cross-sections. And the cross-section cross-sectional area is expressed by this uh, function a of x. And this general equation still holds. The volume, you can get a volume if you integrate along the x-axis, or for that matter y-axis, um, you need to change the variable in here, by just integrating um, uh, an equation for cross-sectional area. And what we're going to be doing in this video is just replacing the, the, the circle formula that would you we would use in here, which was um, pi r squared, or pi f of x squared generally, um, with some other equation. So for example, we could use this with squares. We could, I mean, this could be the equation of a square, or um, uh, an equilateral triangle, or an isosceles triangle, even like a pentagon if you wanted. Um, and so what would these solids look like? They would look something like this. And so this also shows the three components that you need um, or the three bits of information you need in order to solve a problem where um, you find the volume volume based on some curve that you have using cross sections that are not circles. So first off, you need the base, and the base is generally described in the x y plane. In this case, we've got um, a circle, and then you need a cross section. In this case, it's an equilateral triangle, and the equilateral triangle would rest here on the circle and come out like this and then as we move along the circle the, the the equilateral triangles change and they can get smaller or larger and so we use dimensions and values found on the function of the base and we uh, kind of relate those into a formula for um the area of the cross section then we integrate that cross sectional area from um the two limits on the circle, assuming that we're going to be integrating with respect, or that we would be integrating with respect to um, x here, we'd be integrating along the x-axis. And the solid would end up looking something like this. You see all the cross sections right here. They're all added up um, along the x, or actually x-axis, because the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So yes, we're integrating with respect to x um, along this axis, and we're adding up all of the cross sections. So. Conceptually, it's not too, too different from um, the, the revolution method, but in terms of um, actually the nuts and bolts of it, uh, the, the algebra generally works out to be quite a bit different. So let's try one of, those, one of these sample problems. So there aren't too many problems like this in your book, so this is a problem that I've made up, but it's good to be familiar with them because they're on the AP and they show up on the AP quite often. So we're going to have the base of the solid um, that we're going to try to solve the volume for uh, described by this system. We've got f of x is a para the parabola x squared, g of x is the line negative um, one half x, and then the the vertical line x equals two. And for the cross sections, we're going to be using squares that are perpendicular to the x-axis. So these cross sections are going to be like standing up on the base and uh, changing, their dimensions are going to change proportional to how um, the area between these two these functions um, changes. So let's look at that graphically. All right, so here is the graph of that system. We've got f, which is the uh, parabola x squared right here. Um, we've got g, which is the line negative x over 2, and then we've got its limits, which are the, the intersection point at 0, and then um, 2 right here. So all this enclosed space, that is the base. And I'm going to write a little b right there. And so we're getting squares, and so the squares will be popping off of this base kind of like this. And so a square, it's got four equal sides, we call that s and s. So the length s is the distance between the distance along the straight line between f and g for all of the points of x 
on this uh, in this space. And remember, because the squares are perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to be integrating with respect to x. Should they be perpendicular to the y-axis, we would integrate with respect to y. So let's work out an expression for s. So s is going to be the sum of the distance between f and the x-axis and then g and the x-axis. We can actually write that just by subtracting g from f, because since g has a negative sign in it, um, negative x over 2, that'll end up be, that distance will end up being added to f. So s can be written as f minus g, like that. And then a, the, the cross-sectional area, a is s squared. So our cross-sectional area formula should be, we plug into this for s. So it will be, will, it, it'll end up being x squared minus, but minus and a minus is a plus, x over 2 over 2, and then all of that squared. So that is our cross-sectional area formula. And now let's go over to the other screen and solve for the volume. Okay, so given our general formula for volume, the integral um, f between the limits of the, um, the cross-sectional area formula, we can just plug this cross-sectional area formula into there and our limits, which are 0 and 2. So that we will get an expression for the volume as the integral between 0 and 2 of x squared plus x over 2 squared dx. And now let's expand out um, that quantity squared inside and we'll get and we'll get x to the fourth plus 2 times x to the 3 over 2 plus x squared over 4. And uh, now that's just a polynomial and we can integrate that um, between 0 and 2. So that'll be that x to the fourth will become x to the fifth over 5. We can cancel out the 2's there and that x to the third will become x to the fourth over four, and then that x squared over four will become x to the third over twelve, all that between two and zero. And so then once we plug in for two there, we will get thirty-two fifths um, plus four plus two-thirds. And once we figure out a common denominator, which ends up being 15 for that, we get 166 fifteenths. And that is the volume. And that is how we find volumes with um, non-circular cross-sections. cross, -section, cross -sections. So stay tuned for the very end of chapter four. There are more applications of integrals to physics and some other things. It's a lot of fun. Thanks.